Hello, I'm back with um, Scroller Box 104, I think this is, and I'm a bit late with opening it, not because it arrived late, I think it arrived on time, but I've been away on holiday and I'll share some of my adventures with you in the coming videos. So let's open this. Because I've been away as well, um, I have totally managed to avoid any knowledge of what's in this box. have a look. The sweetie is a Chopper Chops Sticks. No idea what a cola. Okay, oh, I got a quick peek there. Looks like paint. So we have got some more watercolour paper. I like this watercolour paper. Very nice. 200 GSM hot, oh, hot press. Okay, that feels a bit more bobbly than I'm used to for a hot press. Interesting. This is the um, print by Maisie Summer. It's a bit like crayons again, actually. She's an illustrator and animator. Very nice. We'll have a look at the zine in a minute, but that does look like crayon. And let's open the main attraction. Oh, there went. Okay. So we got the sticker, which will come from the book somewhere. And we have got a Pro Art Nylon third, Polar 31 and number two. It's a tiny, teeny brush. I bought some tiny teeny brushes just before I went away. We have got, oh, it's not what I thought it was. It is gouache, gouache uh, by Dale Rowney and it's zinc white. Okay. And then here we have got some fine art pencils by Derwent. Six of them. So let's have a look and see. I thought they were going to be a different kind of pencil. They're ink tents pencils. Amazing. Now I wonder which of these colours I've got. So we've got pink flamingo. We've got orange sorbet. Olivine. Baked earth. I know I've got baked earth. Iron blue, which I don't think I've got. And lime green, which I do think I've got. So very happy with these. These are nice. I like to work with them. And that's quite an interesting colour selection there. I've never used them with gouache before, so that will be interesting. And there'll be some tips in here. Um, so, yes, very nice choice of supplies. And for those of you who don't know the ink tens, you can either use them directly as pencils or you can use them as pencils and use water on them to activate them and you can probably see that there so the pencil marks being done first and a bit of water over the top so let's see what's in the zine so it tells us about the pencils uh, you can also use your paintbrush to go directly to the ink there and once they have been activated and dried, they don't reactivate unless you happen to have missed a bit of the um, pigment. So we have a bit about Maisie, Maisie Summer. I'm talking about the ink tense pencils and why she likes them. I must admit, I did use them on my holiday and they were very good. So a few supply tips here, um, swatching them wet and dry. They can be used on paper, ceramics, wood and on fabric, which um, I have done before as well. Not on wood, actually. I've never used them on wood. And I don't think I've used them on ceramics, so um, that would be quite interesting. Then layering them, using them with the gouache, using them directly on the paper, dry on the paper, onto a wet page. So if you wet the page first and then draw, 
or using a palette to scribble it and then use it as ink. A little bit about how we can layer them, a bit of a video tutorial, a bit about how she's made the piece, how Maisie's made the piece of um, art. So sketching wet and dry and extra texture. Good information. Right, scrawler 102 was fire and ice. So let's see who we know. Again, I love the um, difference in the artwork that everybody's produced. I like this one and this one. Actually, I like them all. All very, very nice. And how people have layered them to get some of the different colours. These were the Viviva metallic watercolour sheets. Um, and I did take those on holiday with me as well. We have, oh, look at this. Oh, Karis, I love this. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. I love these two as well. Very nice. And then Maisie's collection in her Derwent pocket pencil wrap. You can see what supplies she carries with her. I will be doing a video about what I took on holiday. Um, and um, I will compare what I took with what I used. You will not be surprised to know <laughs> that I uh, took far more than I actually used. But it was my first art-based holiday, so I've forgiven myself. But that will be coming soon. And then a bit about traditional journaling and personal growth and mental health. Very nice. And the challenge for this month's box is hodgepodge okay so very nice indeed do i happen to have a piece of paper shall i use this i suppose i should really let's go straight into doing a bit of swatching So let's arrange these into some semblance of order. Okay. And so this one is lime green. In fact, what I'm going to do. Do a swatchy swatch one. That's that one. Pink flamingo is next. Stay. I think I should have probably done one of these quite dark and the other one going across quite light, but never mind. It will give us an idea of what they look like laid up on each other. It also should have probably left a gap between each one so they don't run into each other and whatnot and whatnot, but I'm still a bit in a different time zone. Next we've got Baked Earth. I will leave a bit more of a spit. Well, that's not worth it. <clears throat> Olivine. Olivine. Say to 
tomato, I say tomato. Should we go into the sun? Well, it's, it's, it was so cold here when I got back from my holiday yesterday. The house was nine degrees, so I had to put the heating on. And last night, coming back from brownies, the gritters were out. Yep, that's right, in April, the end of April, and the gritters were out on the roads. So um, I think they were expecting ice last night. Uh, did I say this one? Iron blue. a fine mess. Right, I'm not going to use the brush only because I know it'll stain. <laughs> it will get stained very quickly so I'm just going to use this little brush I've got here. So what I might do is leave the top ones as the colour so I see what the colour is like before it's diluted and then, oh look at that. Yeah, I've just realised I'm going to pull the colour across, aren't I? I need to do the square individually. So let's just activate down this side so you can see what the colours are before they get dissolved. There we go. So these are the original colours when they've been wet. These are the, the colours before they're wet and these are the combinations. And I do think if we were more firm with the pencils, that's much firmer. Then we will get some different results. Let's blend, blend these two a bit and see what happens. So you can blend it out a lot.
So when you press much harder than I have, you can see the difference between this original quick sketch and this one. And in the middle, we've got kind of purpley colours. Um, let's see what we get with the lime green and the olivine. It's a lovely colour. So when you press much heavier, you get much more of a painterly effect. Oh, I haven't used this. Oops, sorry. I haven't used this. Mm, I think you're not meant to use the same paintbrushes, are you? This is just ordinary gouache, not, um, not acrylic gouache. <clears throat> sorry. I don't think it's acrylic gouache. Okay, so yeah, it does show up. So you can pastelize it. Is that a word? Pastelize. What would happen if Let's take the blue because that was quite strong. And then a little bit of, well, let's make sure my brush is wet. A touch of gouache and see what happens when we mix it on the page. more of a kind of air force bluey kind of and then obviously the colour will go up. Yeah. <laughs> right I think that's enough playing for now so I'm very happy scroller box with box 104 and what was it hodgepodge hodgepodge I think this is a bit of a hodgepodge of colours. But yeah, I will enjoy playing with these. And with this little paintbrush, we'll be able to get some very fine details. So, there we have it. The sticker, the magazine, the print, and the supplies, and the tea. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.